YouTube family, what's the deal? It's my crispy clean clip of Cliff World TV, and y'all already know how I'm rocking, family. Y'all know this, and today we finna take an interesting deep dive, an introspective look in the life, the journey, the trials, and the tribulations of Atlanta, Georgia's very own, of course. Yeah, bankroll fresh. Y'all jump in the comment section right now and say. R.I.P. Bank Road Fresh, because y'all know that boy Bear was doing it big while he was here, man. But uh, y'all already know what y'all can do. Sit back, get your doobie, kick back like we finna watch a movie, man. This boy Crispy Clean Clip Dog Cliff World TV, man. We been screen to it, screen to it. Bank Road Fresh was born to Tavia Zayman White Sr. August 2nd, 1987, in the city of Atlanta, Georgia, to Teresa Price, his mother who raised him as a single mother. Now, Fresh was a man of many names. Man of many names, depending on how close or how long you were to him or his family. Now, friends and family knew Bankroll Fresh as Bear. And the good folks of Atlanta, Georgia has always known him as Young Fresh. But for the rest of us, we know him by his stage name. Bankroll Fresh now. That's what we would call him now. He was born and raised in Atlanta's West Side Zone 3, to be exact. One of the roughest neighborhoods in the city defined by the police patrol zone. Now, by the age of eight, Young Bear would be inspired by rap legends like Tupac Shakur and even Andre 3000, see YouTube family. When Young Bear was born, his mother was literally 19 years old, turning 20 years old. So she still vividly remembers listening to hip hop all throughout Young Bear's history. Now she'd quote that she was still very young trying to find herself. And by the time Young Bear would develop a taste for hip hop on his own, oftentimes she'd find herself listening to the same music as her son. And to be fair, YouTube family, the Atlanta hip-hop scene was literally just beginning to take over hip-hop in the early 2000s. So it would go without saying that there was plenty inspiration that could be drawn from Atlanta culturally as far as hip-hop goes. Now, Young Fresh would often ask his mother about what everything meant in all the songs that he was overhearing from the double entendres all the way down to the name brand clothing. Now, I know this may seem as though his mother was more of a friend than a mom, but this is far from the truth. Now, Miss Teresa was pretty adamant about Bear bringing home good grades in school, as well as him having perfect attendance. So it wasn't like she was just a pushover mom. In fact, she was quite the opposite. Now, it was the fact that Young Fresh was actually a great student it made it so much easier for her to support Young Fresh in his endeavors with being in the music industry. Now, y'all have to remember that growing up in Atlanta in that time that Bank Road Fresh was growing up was a totally different Atlanta from today. Now, the Atlanta from today is kind of giving vibes of Chicago, but the Atlanta of the past was throwing festivals like Freaknik, man, where it really went down. And not only that, while Bankroll Fresh was on the rise and on the come up, the Atlanta music scene had started to take over. Yeah, man, with songs from the young bloods like If You Don't Give a Damn, We Don't Give a What, the Lil John and the East Side Boys, they had officially taken the crown from New York. Yeah, man, Atlanta was really going down. Now, if you ask me my personal opinion on when Atlanta gained control over the rap game, it would be the song Welcome to Atlanta and not just the regular song. Welcome to Atlanta remix that had Snoop Dogg, Murphy Lee, P. Diddy, Jermaine Dupri. Man, it was just one of those songs that just made Atlanta look way, way, way super big, bro. So if you ask me, the beginning of Atlanta running the rap game is when Welcome to Atlanta remix came out. But some would say even before that, honestly, like when Lil Jon and the Eastside Boys came out, you can kind of basically say Atlanta was finna take over the game. Not to mention Ludacris as well. Ludacris did his work as well. So these would be the times that young Bankroll Fresh would be developing into a young man, but he'd also draw influence from such groups and such elements around Atlanta, Georgia. Now, if we're gonna be real, there were a few eras of Atlanta music that came before Bankroll Fresh came. And I like to start in naming those eras. Now, we had the dance era of Atlanta music. You know, this is back in the Uncle Luke days, even though Uncle Luke ain't from Atlanta. Back in the Jermaine Dupri days, back in the Freak Nick days, you had the dance era of Atlanta music. You know, the 
pussy popping era of Atlanta music. And then you had the era of Atlanta music that went into the crunk era, which would be the Lil John and the East Side Boys, the Lil Scrappy, the Crime Mobs, you know, groups like that, Trioville. But after the crunk epidemic in Atlanta, because crunk died down for a while, after crunk came, you had the new Atlanta sound that came in. Now, the new Atlanta sound that came in, if you ask me, would be like the snap music. When D4L and the Franchise Boys and Soldier Boy, like the snap music came and took over for a while. And then after snap music, simultaneously while the snap music was going on, the official takeoff of trap music came. Now, if you ask me, trap music had an inception right before the snap music, but it didn't culturally take over until after snap music. Now, this is your Gucci Mane LaFleurs. This is your Young Jeezy's. This is your T.I.'s. Now, like I said before, you could say the trap music came before snap music, but trap music didn't fully take over until after snap music with Gucci Mane LaFleur. You feel me? But after that, the city of Atlanta, Georgia, you know what I mean? They The trap music era kind of wore down with the black boy, white boy swag era, which would be like the Travis Porter, the Young Droz. What's those guys that did the swag surface on? Them guys, you feel me? You had a different era of Atlanta where they was doing the white boy, black boy swag. Even Gucci Mane had a song called Nerd, you heard my? And then the new, new Atlanta was ushered in, you feel me? I forgot to mention uh, Jay Futuristic and Young LA. They actually did their parts with the with that. But anyway, the new Atlanta sound got ushered in. And with the new Atlanta sound, you had the Migos, you had Pee Wee Longway, you had Jose Guapo, Hood Rich Pablo One, Rich the Kid, Two Chains, Future, Skipper the Flipper, MPA Duke, Young Thug, 21 Savage, Metro Boom, and TM88, Southside. But on the street exec side, you had your boy Bankroll Fresh, man. And needless to say, Bankroll Fresh was one of those guys who ushered in a new sound. Now, if y'all ask me, Bankroll Fresh looked like Clifton Powell. If y'all know who Clifton Powell is, jump in the comment section and let me know. Now, although Bankroll Fresh's mother did her best job in order to keep her son out of the streets, man, it was really, really becoming difficult for him to stay out of the streets. You understand what I'm saying? Like the city of Atlanta, Georgia is filled with plenty of trouble to get into. But not only that, the city of Atlanta, Georgia is filled with money to go out there and get to as well. So he would be kind of indulging into those type of activities where he would be getting in trouble and getting some money, but leaning more towards the getting some money side. But nevertheless, the mama can't teach you how to be a man. So it's inevitable that a young man will go out into this world on his own when he don't have no type of guidance and figure it out for himself. And that's exactly what Bankroll Fresh did. I mean, coming up in zone three, bro, a project infested area on the west side of Atlanta, you're going to be picking up some games somewhere. I mean, there's not that many opportunities out there, and you will inevitably become a product of your environment if you stay too long. Now, if you ask me, Bankroll Fresh would embody the persona of a West Side Zone 3 Atlanta nigga, bro. Honestly, if you listen to his music and you wasn't from Atlanta, Georgia at all, you can feel every single thing he said from his demeanor to the way he came on the track to the way he swagged it from his cadence, his tone and his voice, the seriousness in his raspy voice. And then watching his videos, you kind of get vibes of a, of a, let's say a darker, more street savvy T.I. That's if you was from out of town and you didn't know at all what was going on in Atlanta, Georgia at all. Bankroll Fresh embodied being a West Side Atlanta man. And YouTube family, for those of you who do not know, the West Side of Atlanta is just like the West Side anywhere in the United States of America. If you get in your car and drive to your local West Side right now, wherever city you at right now, drive to the West Side. Every West Side in every city of the United States of America is damn near the ghetto. Let's just be real. If we, can we all agree that Anywhere the West Side is at in the United States is ghetto. It's long, the East Side, too. But can we all agree that the West Side in any city is the ghetto? 
Now, Bankroll Fresh would have a stepfather by the name of K. Rich that has served as his mentor. He was the CEO and founder of Savior Fair Entertainment, an independent rap label that was established in the 2000s. Now, in 2005, Bankroll Fresh's stepfather slash mentor K. Rich would help Gucci Mane LaFleur launch his own record label that was entitled LaFleur Entertainment. Now, while doing this, K. Rich would eventually position Young Bankroll Fresh exactly where he needed to be. So, Bankroll Fresh was already around stars like Gucci Mane LaFleur and a lot of other underground guys that was making noise in Atlanta, Georgia. So, there was no perfect place for him to be other than right there with K. Rich. Matter of fact, YouTube family, everybody jump in the comment section and say shout out to K. Rich, bro, because it's not every day that you will have a stepdad, you know what I mean, that will step up as the role of your primary father and on top of that help you pursue your dreams as being an entertainer. That's not an everyday thing, bro. So shout out to K. Rich, wherever you at, partner. Use a real one, bro. Um, this is the example of stepping up for a child when he really needs the guidance. You know what I mean? This is right here, some commendable stuff. So I commend K. Rich for this. I just had to pause the segment for a little while and give him his flowers. But uh, yeah, let's get back to it. Fresh will be surrounded by Atlanta legends, man. And he will pick up some of the sway from around the way. Now, K. Rich wouldn't only put Young Fresh on his label, he would put his cousin on the label as well. Yeah, he would put Young Fresh's cousin Montana D. Mac on as well in 2003 with the label. And what was the name of the label, you might ask? Well, the label is Street Money Worldwide. Screed, y'all jump in the comment section and say screed. Y'all know how it's going down for bankroll friends. Now his cousin Montana would actually be the one to take the forefront initially because at the time bankroll fresh didn't have as much confidence in himself as being a composed artist. It wasn't like he was scared to rap. It was just he knew that he had fine tuning to go through, and plus he wanted to be observant on how to move through third person. So. Montana, his cousin, was the first one to go on the forefront, and he kind of played the backfield and watched and seen, you know, all the moves that he made in order for him to tune his act together. You know what I mean? Yeah, he was more so playing the background and scoping out every move that was made, man, so he can come as raw as possible when it was his time to emerge. All right, so eventually, Young Bankroll Fresh would begin to emerge from the background and start to shine. Now, after about five or six years of fine tuning and well tuning, because y'all got to remember in 2003 is when he actually signed. We didn't really hear about Bankroll Fresh until like 2010, 11, 12. The city of Atlanta, Georgia was listening to Young Fresh in 2007. Just to throw that out there. Just throw that out there. I know a lot of Atlanta heads from the drop in this comment section. I know y'all serious about y'all artists, so yes. Bankroll Fresh was making noise in 2007, but the rest of the world didn't hear him until around 2011, 12, 13. Bankroll Fresh would become one of the number one shining prospects coming out the Atlanta rap scene. This could be due to his high energy while performing and his high energy while rapping, man. Like Bankroll Fresh, if y'all knew Bear, you knew his energy was literally like through the roof with it. He, he was real charismatic and magnetic to say the very least. And at that time, it was time for Atlanta to be represented in a new light. Now, Bankroll Fresh came through with a signature flow that I have heard nobody in Atlanta use this flow since Bankroll Fresh has passed and left the earth. I've heard one guy come close to using his song or his flow pattern, and that would be Yellow Beezy. That up one, I'm up one, I'm up one. Like if you really listen to that Yellow Beezy song, I'm up one with um, Lil Baby on it. He, you could tell he used a Bankroll Fresh flow pattern. And even in the song, he says, Scream! Yeah, R.P. Bankroll. So, hey. But I've never heard nobody in the city of Atlanta, Georgia, actually use Bankroll Fresh flow. But anyway, let's continue with the story. Now, as we all know, maybe just some of us know, Bankroll Fresh was a part of the Get Rich Click. That was of the likes of his cousin Montana, Black Boy, Hustle Man, and his cousin Street Money Bucci, man. Shout out to that boy Street Money Bucci, man. Get back in full effect, Street Money Bucci, real spill. And like I said to y'all, by the year 2007, Lil Old Bankroll Fresh would begin to gain traction and stand out and stand apart from the group. After that, he'll build a close relationship with Gucci. 
Yeah, I'm talking about that old Gucci. Kick your trap door off the door hinges, Gucci, man. Black tea. Rob in my black tea. It licks in my black tea, Gucci, man. It will be featured on the song Faces that came out in 2009 with Gucci, man, LaFleur. Yeah, that boy Bank Row has started getting some major placement, man, you know. And needless to say, the young man was absolutely talented at what he did. It seemed like him playing the background for the time that he played. He really pinpointed all the aspects that he needed in order to take over with his sound. Now, after this song, all of Bank Road, Fresh's family and friends, the whole west side of Atlanta, Georgia, even the nine, even the people in the Allen Temple apartments, man, everybody in Atlanta, the new Bank Road, Fresh, young bear, let them know, like, bro, you got it. You got it, on. You got to keep going, on. You really, really got this. Now, they don't say that about everybody. You feel me? I know y'all see a lot of people come up out of Atlanta, but it's a whole lot of failed rappers from Atlanta, too, that they don't talk about. Yeah, man, so Bankroll Fresh, bro, he had that Midas touch, man. He turned it into gold, and everybody was supportive of him. In 2012, young Bankroll Fresh would gear up with that boy DJP exclusives. Yeah. And he had dropped his first official mixtape on his own. Entitled Street Motivation that was produced by none other than Zato. Yeah, man, jump in the comment section right now and say, Scream! Yeah, that boy Bankroll Fresh had done hooked up with the best Oregon orchestrated piano player in the world. Trap beat extraordinaire, Zato. Earlier, off camera, we was talking about, you know, how Goofy Man was one of the people to, you know, put people on and fuck with, you know independent rappers, you know, that's, you know, uh, I used to see you doing so, but how you meet up with, how, how you meet up with Just man? down in the, in, in Zay Token basement. Um, well, I, I met, working with Zay Token. Yeah, I met Zay through a mutual, I, you know, just seeing him out in the club, but a friend of mine, his name is Wallow. Uh, he, you know, he know all the music down here in Atlanta. So goddamn, Wallow brought me a CD with some Zay beats on it. It was my first time doing a song. I made a song called Yes Sir. It was, it, it, it had done goddamn, it was one of the hardest songs that they say he heard. I'm like, well, that shit is it. Everybody started liking it. So I'm like, shit, first you need to start writing. So I'm like, shit, I'm gonna start doing it. Come on. Buddy's done was always doing it, but I wasn't never serious with the shit. I had uh, like 1500, and then my dad had gave me like for 1500. We went in, like, shit, fuck it. Just going to try to put shit on the radio. I had put the motherfucker on a little radio. They played in the little mix shows, but they ain't really never do nothing. So I was like, man, you know what? I can lock this shit down. So goddamn, going and seeing. March 13, 2013, Bank Road Fresh and his stepfather would officially start their own record label, Street Money Worldwide. A year later, Bank Road Fresh would take off. I mean, literally take off, man. He had three songs going at one time, man. He had Life of a Hot Boy 2. A hit song, I'm a real trap, but I do what I want. And then in 2015, he would come out with a song entitled Rock Solid, man. But if you ask me, man, one of my favorite Bank Road Fresh songs is Pop Shit. That, that right there need to go down in the Hall of Fame, man. Now, although Bankroll Fresh, man, was a very, very likable guy, all around of Atlanta, Georgia, man, the West Side Zone 3, to be exact, you got to know, man, it was still people out there looking at him and just being envious, fam. You got to know that everybody that said he was his partner, 100% was not his partner. But you got to know. Everybody in Atlanta was trying to rap, bro. That one thing about Atlanta, bro, they definitely got a poor side where people ain't got no money at all. And then they got the side where damn near everybody got money. Everybody trapping, everybody got a honey ball, everybody driving beans, everybody got a condo, man. But not everybody got the talent to rap. Not everybody can captivate a crowd. Not everybody is a master ceremony MC on the mic, you feel me? So you had guys like No Plug that was cool with Bankroll Fresh. He was from the nine, man. He was from the Allen Temple Apartments. He was cool with Bankroll Fresh. They buddies, they grew up together, they partners. But little success like this, the success that Bankroll Fresh experienced, man, with him being a talented, versatile rapper from the city of Atlanta, Georgia, that little separation will cause your day one homeboys to envy you and become jealous of you and grow larceny in their heart for you. 
see it first. Bankroll Fresh was cool to roll around the city of Atlanta on his own merit, man. He left Zone 3, Bankhead. He can go to the Out of Temple Apartments on the 9 on his own. You know, he'll call up the boy No Plug, but somewhere down the line, man, the hate began. Now, people may think that Bankroll Fresh had just busted on the scene, but in all actuality, he had a song with Gucci Mane in 2006 entitled Rock Sider, so it baffles me how people would just now start hating on the man somewhat 10 years later. March 4th, 2016. It was 11 p.m. when shots rang out, leaving Trent to bleed out in the parking lot of Street Exec Studio. There was an altercation that had broken out between Bankroll Fresh and his buddy, his partner, one of his oldest childhood friends, a guy by the name of No Plug. Now, story has it that the two had a small bit of friction that had went unsettled. And you know how it is when you get into it with your homie, bro. But as I said earlier on in this segment, bro, you never know who really hating on you, bro. You never really know who your partner for real, bro. You really never really know. So Bankroll Fresh and No Plug got into an altercation at Street Exec Studios where they would get into a scuffle and then they would fall down a flight of stairs in the hallway. During the scuffle, Bankroll Fresh allegedly came into possession of a cell phone that belonged to No Plug. And No Plug became in possession of a handgun that belonged to Bankroll Fresh. Man, y'all can see how this is finna go, right? You can hear it in the... Okay. After Bankroll asked to get the handgun back and No Plug asked to get the phone back, it was pretty evident that the two were heated and they wasn't finna give each other nothing back. Well, that will escalate things outside where it's alleged that no plug got inside of a vehicle and pulled off and Bank Road Fresh would allegedly send shots after the fleeing vehicle, in which case someone in the vehicle would send return shots and those return shots would eventually end up taking a life of Bank Road Fresh. Y'all jump in the comment section right now and say R.I.P. Oh, Bank Road Fresh. Y'all know he probably was going to be real pillar in Atlanta for real, bro. Definitely, definitely top 10 Atlanta flow of all time, bro. Yeah, real shit, bro. Real shit. And it's just sad to know that he actually got killed by one of his homeboys, not because of the argument. We all know it wasn't because of the little argument. It was because he was jealous, bro. He was literally jealous. It don't matter that he had all this money, all this condo. You didn't have the skills to pay the bills. You didn't have the same talent that he was having, man. And it's crazy how ain't nobody do nothing to do, bro. He just still roaming free through the city of Atlanta. But they say it was justified. But anyway, man, y'all already know that No Plug would go on Vlad TV and do an infamous interview, followed up by 21 Savage, man. And I'm going to leave y'all with a couple clips of that. And I'm going to come on back, holler at y'all before we go, man. Y'all just become a section right now. And say R.I.P. Bear, man. Scree! Like, when did y'all meet and how close was the friendship? Okay, well, we met like when we was probably like, probably like 10 or 12, some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was tight. We always been tight. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was my boy. That was my boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, our friendship always been, always been good. You know what I'm saying? Until like a certain level of his career came about. You know what I'm saying? Okay, and what happened at that point? Well, it was just a, it was just a lot going on. You know, we were, like, if I see him, you know what I'm saying, we'll speak, but I was never, like, with him, like, when he first started rapping, like, got out there, I was never around, you know what I'm saying? I was always on the block. So, when I see him, I speak to him, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not just going to pulling up on him and all that, you know what I'm saying? But when I see him, you know, we kick, you know what I'm saying? We kick shit. Okay, and you're from the Ninth Ward? I'm from Allen Temple, but yeah, I'm, 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 I'm Ninth Ward, mate, hey, yeah. Okay, so you guys were friends up to a certain point. His career started going a certain type of way and you guys kind of just drifted your own separate ways? Yeah, 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 some shit like that, yeah. Okay, so I guess late last year in 2015, there was a, a turkey drive and there was some sort of altercation that happened? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we just, um, like, my little cuz, you know, skate, he and he, he ain't played no parts and none, you know what I'm saying? He always played both sides, you feel me? He was passing out toys already, uh, food, whatever they was passing out. So he was in the nine. Fresh, he was already in the temp and already passed out everything, you know what I'm saying? 
So Skate, he's passing out everything. Then I guess Fresh called him and tell him he finna pull in the nine. You know what I'm saying? So he just pulled in the nine, you know what I'm saying? So we was like, we ain't really fucking with you like that, you feel me? So we just he just got escorted out. Like he didn't get robbed, he didn't like I wasn't gonna let none of that type shit happen, you know what I'm saying? Cause he he's still my boy, he was still with my boy, you feel me? But we just like we, we just went seeing eye to eye, you feel me? So we just escorted him out the nine, you know what I'm saying? Like he just rolled out and skate continued doing what he was doing, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so so Bankroll Fresh was basically giving out giving out toys or whatever. He was else. giving out toys in Ellen Temple. And skate um schoolie, he was giving out toys in the nine. You know what I'm saying? Fresh tried to come to the nine after everything he had done passed out everything, you feel me? To the little kids and shit. Yeah, so we wouldn't okay. we just went no no you ain't finna just coming out of hood and just you know what I'm saying, cause we let him shoot the hot boy video in the nine. You know what I'm saying? Like this one shit was peaches and cream, you know what I'm saying? He coming every day to the nine. I'm giving him weed to smoke, you feel me? I never, it was never no hatred shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas that know me and him, everybody know him really know me. They know I have been having my way, you feel me? Like, I have been having my way ever since high school, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, everything always been good, but at a certain point, he just, females he was talking to who I had not already ran through, like, he was, it was jealousy, all kind of stuff, bro. Like. I couldn't believe him. Okay, so there's a little altercation that happened in the ninth ward. Yeah. Where where he was he was asked to leave yeah. that area. So from that time to the studio, had, had you guys seen each other at all? Um no, nah, we didn't see each other. We that was our first time probably seeing each other at the studio, yeah, that, that night. Okay, so how did you end up in that studio? I was on the way to South Carolina to um, pass out CDs and shit with, um, with Lil Cuz. He was going, he had a show in um, South Carolina. So I was going to go tag along with him just to pass my shit out. You know what I'm saying? Just put my shit on the windows and shit. So he told me to meet him up there. So I met him up there. We went in the building and shit like that. Okay, so you go, you go into the studio mm -hmm. and then what happens? Shit, I go to the studio. I'm, I'm, I'm on FaceTime with one of my hoes, you know what I'm saying? So. I'm just chilling and goddamn like five, I say five or 10 minutes of me being in there, he approached me from behind, you know what I'm saying? First thing he said was like, damn bro, why you let them put me out the nine? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, that shit old bro, I don't wanna hear about that shit bro. Just keep on rapping bro, just goddamn don't do your thing, you feel me? So he was just so stuck on that old situation, you know what I'm saying? They said his female friend came Straight told him I was down there. She seen me come in, you know what I'm saying? So they said she told him, relayed the message. He came straight down, approached me with the situation. Okay, so he approached you. He's still upset about the, the Ninth Ward situation. Yeah. What happened next? Well, he was he was talking a lot of shit, and I was like, bro, I ain't trying to hear that shit. So I, I turned around trying to, uh, I was gonna leave. He tried to mush me. When he tried to mush me, I just grabbed him, you know what I'm saying? Like grabbed him and we tussled, we fell down the steps. And our childhood friend, C Note, he he broke the shit up, you know what I'm saying? Like ASAP, you know what I'm saying? Like we didn't throw no punches, none of that type shit. Like it was just a straight, he tried to mush me, I grabbed him, we fall down the steps, the altercation's over with, you feel me? Okay, and then what? I'm I'm finna leave the studio, actually. I was leaving because the shit was so fucked up. I was like, bro, you don't fuck up. You don't try me in front of all these folks. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit gonna get, you know what I'm saying? So, boom, boom. I'm finna leave. So, I leave the studio, but I check my pockets. So, I guess when we fell down the steps, I dropped both of my phones inside the studio. So, I pulled back up to the studio. You know what I'm saying? I pulled back up to the studio to get the cell phones. When I pulled back up to the studio to get the cell phones, he came back out like, I like 10, 15 niggas, you know what I'm saying? All of them had guns, he had a stick, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, come on, bro. Why the hell do you got a stick for? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, I ain't, like, it ain't even that kind of situation. You know what I'm saying? He know I would never, like, just harm him like that, you feel me? Because I know his mama. I ain't even trying to be looking at his mama like, damn, on, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I'm glad she just got some information about the situation. You know what I'm saying? She ain't just really cold-hearted against me, you know what I'm saying? Cause she know goddamn I went never on no hatred shit. The situation, he caused the situation to happen. You know what I'm saying? He came out with this gun and shit, and shit happened. You know what I'm saying? When he came out playing with the shit, like just playing with the shit, 
he fired a shot and, and shit happened. We pulled off, we end up, he end up dead. That simple the shit was, like, the shit was that simple, like, he pulled the gun, shot the motherfucker, couple shots got fired back, he got hit, I leave. Next thing you know, folks calling me saying Fresh dead, you know what I'm saying? I call my lawyer, Ash Joseph, Gucci man lawyer, give him 10,000, go down to the homicide, tell Miss Benton everything, and shit, everything was great. In in the story. Oh, okay, so you come now. I know that story, man. Everybody heard it. It kind of seemed like Bankroll Fresh was in the wrong, bro. To be real with you, honestly, it kind of do seem like it got took out of proportion with the altercation. But I'm gonna go ahead and say this, bro. I know no plug seemed like a player hater, but you gotta understand this too, YouTube family, man. When somebody's shooting at you. Friend or foe, don't matter who it is, bro. That mean they already kind of had the thought of doing some serious harm to you. I don't know the backstory. I don't really know what the real problem between Bankroll Fresh and No Plug was. I honestly feel like it could have been talked out, but clearly it got took too far, man. So I don't know, bro. But one thing I can say is this, man. No Plug on here acting like he not a hater. Bruh, you was hating. I don't care what you say, homie. You was hating. You didn't like the success that your homie was having. Because if, if you wasn't hating, why do you mention the females that you messed around with before him? Like, what does that even matter, bro? Why is you mentioning how much money you got and all that? That don't, that don't even matter. That don't, that don't matter if you're not hating, bro. The truth is undisputed. It don't need no explanation, bro. So I'm going to leave y'all with another clip of No Plug and 21 Savage. Now, I would leave the 21 Savage clip with Vlad TV, man, but y'all get the gist of it. But this clip right here, 21 Savage and No Plug was on stage, No Plug was performing, and 21 Savage was like, man, say you that little nigga that killed Bankroll. Say that little nigga you killed Bankroll, man. So, hey, I don't know, man. It getting tricky in Atlanta. If you ask me, man, Bankroll Fresh was the last of a dying breed, bro. He was just around the wrong guys, bro, the wrong era, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm pimping like I'm done one. I'ma stop at the store, sell me an onion. Go and get some backwoods in the back of Funyun. Let a nigga play me sweet and he gon' meet the honey bun. I ain't ride with it unless he got a hundred round drum. Hit that nigga with the drink, he gon' butt up out I'm bomb. Hit her with the daddy's truck, I got the little baby sprung. Gotta keep that thing on you coming from where I'm from. Gotta keep that thing.